I don't even have a template for this one day. It's a no template one day. Heave the lathe out of its spot. I should get a permanent spot for that thing. For being a mini lathe, it sure does weigh a lot. First spook of the channel, a swayback spook. That's what they called the vintage ones. A spook swayback, heading something like that. Little topwater hot dogs. Nano, nano spook is what we're going for. Got some size 10 owner ST36 treble hooks. Gonna make something that fits those treble hooks. Okay. I don't really want to overly simplify the shape. I want there to be differences in it from just a tube, you know? I don't want it to just be a tube. Just a bit fatter at the front, narrows down at the back. Different angles, like the back's gonna taper back slower, the head's gonna be faster. That's it, really. Sandpaper. 150, 220, 320, 400. There's our shape. We can work with that. How long is this? 1.5. I think the junior spooks were like three and a half inches, so this is sizing it down substantially. We started this one day at about 8.20, 8.50 right now. Smoothed the front and back so it doesn't have those lathe marks anymore or lathe attachment points. We're not turning on the lead pot today. We're gonna put like three pieces of bird shot in the, in the back, towards the back. I guess it doesn't really matter where I poke. That'll just be the bottom. And we'll align everything else from there. That's where the lead hole's going. A little bit towards the back to get this thing sitting in the water like that. It's gotta float, but it's gotta sit in the water a little back, back heavy. 0.165 inch, 4.2 millimeter ball in the Dremel. Did a little bit of cavitation swirl inside of there so it's thicker on the inside than it is on the out. We'll fit three in there and then along with the super glue and baking soda, that'll add weight as well. You can tell it wants to stay in one spot, belly down. It's what we need. Let's smooth that off. I marked out exactly where the eyes should go. I eyeballed those eyes super hard. That is where they go. Poke. Quarter inch. That is going to be some pretty oversized eyes for this bait, even though it's uh, that's pretty small for normal eyes. <laughs> it looks goofy. <laughs> kind of in a good way. I marked out and poked where all the pilot holes need to go. This is moving along quickly. Very beginner friendly bait to try out. If you're looking to start making baits, you don't need a lathe. You can just use your hands and a knife and sandpaper. 0 0.085 inch, 2.2 millimeter Allen key in the vise. We're gonna do twist wire for this bait. Tiny little twist wire hardware loops. I think that'll make for the most sleek looking hardware.
I think anything else would look pretty bulky. Screw eyes. I have small ones, but the like that's some thick wire and it's a little bit larger in diameter. A tiny little walking bait. Needs its super glue bath. Nice, that went on really smooth. We didn't get any crusties. Sealed. Ready for paint. It's not even 10 o'clock. And we're about to start with white. I'm just gonna figure out a paint scheme that looks decent. All right, what I'm gonna do first is put a super defined, bright, blood red, blood line down the side. Just splotchy and very much there. I was wiggling that trigger. It's very much there. I made each side go kind of under the eye. Now moving on and doing my best not to cover that up. That'll kind of give me a good gauge of how much color I'm putting on the bait by not covering that up. I might fade into it a little, but I'm not gonna cover it up. The color that's going to fade the most into that bloodline will be Intrinsic Shade. That's a cool color name. Nice. Okay, next I need to be careful. Copper on that white under the bloodline. I didn't want it to go too much up, up into the red, but it did a little bit, and that's cool. Nice. It's very even on both sides. Diseased umber with a comb for a stencil. Pretty good. Scales are going over that. Along with another color on the top before the scales. That was a super dark green called vile green. All right, time for scales. That's a lot of, that is a lot of stuff going on for a base coat on a tiny nano bait, but looking good. We're gonna paint a gill plate on this thing even. All right, we scaled it up, meshed it up with some tool mesh, tool, tool. Pearl white. Doesn't that intrinsic shade look good? I'm gonna have to try to keep some of that. Just lightly put some pearl white over it. This one's gonna be a lot like the last one in the last video, just kind of simple. A pearlized pattern. Yep. But you can still see some of that intrinsic, intrinsic shade, bloodline copper spots on the belly. I mean, you can even see the, what was it? Vile green, or no, diseased umber. Those lines, pretty good. All right, we're gonna give it a gill. That's just like a base where all of the gill detail will be. You gotta do it in black first. I think that looks best. The stencil needs to be placed absolutely perfectly. Just a slither, sliver above where we sprayed the black. So there's a little line. Wow, this is tough on this little bait. Nice. That's the sliver I was talking about, that black line on the outside. There we go. That looks pretty pro. A quick shot of pearl white. There's more. A beautiful bright baby blue. I didn't want that to just seem like it's around the eye socket. I want the gill to be that. Super contrasting with the rest of the body. That did it right there. Left some pearl white closer to the edge of the gill plate. Of all the 3D eyes that I have, I think these will match the best. Can you see that blue reflecting in the prism of light that's coming off of those 3D eyes? I think overall it's gonna match. I like how it's pretty recessed in there too. That's a cool paint scheme for a spook. 
Clear coat. Hard Chinese UV resin into a cup. It's looking really good. I really like that paint scheme. We're gonna run outside with it real quick here. It's a nice sunny day. So sunny, my eyes are watering. We, we got a bubble. It appeared while it was curing. That's pretty annoying, right on the eye socket. I feel as though there is nothing I could have done about that. that it just appeared and it's hard as a rock now. It's not super noticeable but it is slightly noticeable. Bob Saget. There's nothing I'm gonna do about it, but there's the good side. Thumbnail side. Give it a rotation every 10 minutes. Leave it out here for an hour, then we're gonna go fishing. Bob Saget, Chip. He sniffs bird poop. It's his favorite thing to sniff on the ground. Very American looking, very red, white, and bluish. Unintentional. It's got scales that go all the way to the nose on the top even. Good contrast. I feel pretty confident. Go make it official. Glorious. We're gonna go to the same creek that we went to for the nano popper. Some topwater nano spook creek fishing. That sounds fun. The bergamot is out in full force today. The creek looks good. That poison ivy didn't though. Oh yeah. The creek looks a bit up. That's what I was hoping for because it rained a couple days ago. Really hard. First time testing. Oh, I wanted to mention, I didn't test this in my test tank because it's empty right now. It floats. Okay, I can get it to do the darting side to side. I think because there's current in the creek, it's not very consistent. Oh yeah, you can do it. Once you get facing the current in a certain way, it just wants to go into the current. Cast's really good. Oh, it's way better on a long cast. It's walking. It's walking. It's good. When it's way out there, it does a bit of a glide, like it'll move itself after a twitch. Look at it walk. Can you guys see that way out there? Dude, it was walking so good. It still it. Look at. Oh my. That's really good for a nano. The consistent retrieve with the twitches, it does exactly what you would want it to. <gasps> that was one. That was a bite. Okay, they're territorial. They're not hungry, they're just territorial. I mean, you can kind of see the walk when I get it close like this, but it's so much better way out there. Oh! <laughs> ah, they're just mad at it, they're not hungry. There we go, fish on. We got an angry one. Yep, it's official. Creek smallies, bye-bye. Like nano spooks, we got a small mouth at the first spot on the creek. It's official. I hope you guys can see this. It dives slightly and cranks. Because of the way the eyes are shaped, it digs into some water and cranks on a steady retrieve. Now I just want to fish it like that. Dude, that's really good. Wibble wobble. <laughs> that's really, really good. Dude, it works just like a spook, but it's tiny. This is good stuff. I don't know if a nano spook already exists. Probably. This probably isn't anything new, but I'm just very happy with the turnout on the action of this bait and the paint. 
The paint's super unique, the action's spot on. It's official. If we catch something really good out of this creek today, this is like an Omega official bait right here. Whoa! <laughs> That looks like a frog. That didn't look like a fish. You imagine if we got a bullfrog on the nano spook? Instant Omega Fischl. Fish on. It's tiny. Over the rocks. Woo! Another species. Just like that, we're up to two species. Green sunfish, a beautiful vibrant one that deserves a slow motion release. I should just say a 618 release, right? Be free. He didn't know where to go for a second. Got the green sunfish out of the way. We could still get a large mouth. We could still get a pike. We could still get a creek chub. We could still get bluegill. Gotcha. <laughs> Another smallie. Got two hooks into him. It's official. We can catch the dinkos with this bait pretty easy. Be free. Yeah, when they bite, we're getting good hookups. This seems like a more effective bait than the popper was. I did put a smaller treble hook on the back. There's a smaller one on the back and a bigger one on the front. By the way, we have uh, the time to keep track of 110. That was a one day complete before one o'clock. What in the world? Me showing you the time just caused a huge tangle for some reason. Not your guys' fault, my fault, but whoa. One day complete before one o'clock. That's pretty fast, I don't know if I've done it faster than that before. With a bait I'm super happy about, this is crazy. All right, I think I see a really good part of this creek right there. Gotcha! That was a good hit. Oh, bigger fish, bigger fish. Woo! Okay, I can feel the officialness. Bigger creek smolly for this creek. Like the nano spook, it's official. I knew this was a good hole, I felt it. Deep in my plums. Sorry. That's a good feeling. It's got the better smallie. That could be the biggest smallie out of this hole right here. We caught it on the nano spook. Gotcha. We caught another on the middle treble hook. Another green sunfish. Be free. We're catching them good. Lucky deer. I hear it. Just running through the woods. Oh, hi. It's a little one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> About right. We got a good bait. It's a good day. Catching good fish. I knew we were going to see lucky deer. Doesn't that look like a pig? That big rock. Looks like a pig laying in the creek with the nose this way and the butt that way. You see it. Maybe it's a big mineralified pig from 800 million years ago. I deem that rock henceforth shall be named pig rock. Fish on. Oh, that was a tiny, tiny one. Fish on. It's a green sunfish snatcher, that's for sure. And another. That was another green sunfish. I saw its belly. Gotcha. This is some fantastic ultralight fishing. Look at that beautiful fish. Be free. You can pinpoint right where you want this bait too. Like I wanted it right between those two rocks. It's a good caster. Man, a long time ago, me and Chels fished right here and she caught walleye right there when the creek was higher. I think that video is called Fishing for Pike. It's like five years ago. Okay, not too shabby. One of those smallies was pretty good, like a pound. I'm not done yet. We're gonna go somewhere else. Wouldn't be much of a video if we didn't catch a largemouth somewhere. So we caught some largies and some sunfish, some beefy sunfish too, but the audio decided to uh, not work for the first time ever on this camera. Kind of disappointing. 
my Insta360 failed me for the first time ever. Slow mo release. That fish hit the water and then didn't swim away for like 10 seconds. <laughs> so there's there's no swim away footage of that. But yeah, I think the audio picks back up after I turned off and on the recording here. Fish on. What are you? Another giant sunfish. Dude, these things are so big. Be free. We're gonna catch one off this structure right here. Yep, I knew it. It's another good one. Sunfish. <laughs> it's a male. What a beautiful fish. It is super official by now. It's a well-established staple of a bait. There you are. Here's a good one. Oh, this is a good sunfish. Whoa! Green sunfish hybrid thing. Yeah, this one immediately felt beefier. That's a gnarly looking fish. It's official. Green sunfish hybrid thing. I don't, I'm not going to count that as another species. Haha! <laughs> this feels a bit better. Ooh! Is it another one of those things? Yeah, even bigger one this time. That's a pretty cool fish. It's a very aggressive fish. Those green sunfish things. What a fantastic little bait. Super happy to still have it. So many times I make a bait and then I just hang it up, never fish with it again. That one's going in the bag, my tackle bag. That one's bonus fishing worthy. That's it, just, just a ton of success, that's it, that's all. Boom. Just a good old extremely successful one day. Video's over. Thanks for watching. On to the next bait. Go outside. Quick. I've been waiting so long for these sunflowers to bloom. This one's just getting ready. You can see a little bit of yellow in there. It's been like weeks. They're taking forever. Hey, Finn. Got some hot peppers. Got some pepperoncinis. Got some sweet peppers, bunch of cucumbers. This plant's going dry, I need to water it. There's an onion. There's one lonely strawberry. Not even ready to eat. And no raspberries. Poor chip. <laughs>